In this video, I'll be setting up DDNS and port forwarding to enable external access to a Synology NAS that's running DSM-7. I'll start with an introduction on DDNS, then I'll go over setting up DDNS within DSM-7. I'll then cover port forwarding and walk through the steps I needed to take to allow my router to forward specific ports to allow me to externally access my Synology NAS. Lastly, I'll enable HTTP to HTTPS automatic redirect to make sure I'm always using a secured connection when accessing my Synology NAS. Let's start with an introduction to DDNS or Dynamic DNS. DDNS is a service that automates updating DNS records when the public IP address assigned by our ISP changes. DDNS links that public IP address to an easy-to-remember domain name that you'll use to access your home or business, and specifically the service or services you enable on your Synology NAS. To make use of DDNS, we'll need to choose a service provider, and in this video, I'll be using Synology as the provider. The final part of the setup is having a DDNS client update the DDNS provider if the public IP address changes so we can continue to use the domain name we've chosen without interruption. Synology provides us a DDNS client within DSM-7 and we'll use it to set up everything next. Note also that the external IP addresses and host names in these past few slides are either randomly selected or temporary and that's why they haven't been blurred out. In DSM-7, you can configure DDNS by going to Control Panel, External Access, and selecting DDNS. I'll click Add to bring up the Add DDNS window. Here, we'll need to provide the requested information to get DDNS set up. For Service Provider, I'll use Synology's own DDNS service and add in a host name I'd like to use. For Email, I'll need to sign into my Synology account, which then returns me back to the Add DDNS window. Note, if you plan to use another DDNS provider, you'll need to enter in a host name you've set up along with the username and password for that provider as well. Next, I'll check the box, get a certificate from Let's Encrypt, and set it as default. I'll leave the Enable Heartbeat box checked so I can get notifications if the connection goes down. Lastly, I'll test the connection to make sure everything looks fine and click OK to finish up the DDNS setup. This warning message lets me know that the default certificate will be set to the DDNS address and where to go to adjust the certificate settings for other services. I'll click OK, which triggers the restart of the web server, and in just about a minute, I'm returned to the DDNS window with the DDNS entry displayed correctly on screen. With DDNS all set up, the next thing we need to do is configure port forwarding through our router to be able to externally access the services enabled on our Synology NAS. The result would be that when we try to access a service using the DDNS name we set up earlier, along with the port we are forwarding, we'd be able to connect directly to the Synology NAS service remotely. Router setup on a Synology NAS running DSM-7 is available from Control Panel, External Access, and Router Configuration. Here, I'll click Setup Router and start the test of the network components listed here on screen. In my case, the Detect Router Information check takes the longest to complete, and it's probably because my router doesn't have Universal Plug and Play or UPnP turned on. Depending on the router that you have, and if you have UPnP turned on or not, you may get different results from what I'm seeing. I'll leave a link to Synology's router configuration help page in the description below to guide you along your specific setup. I'll continue to the manual router setup window where there is an option to select your router from the router drop-down menu. I checked and my router, which is a Ubiquiti Edge Router X, isn't listed, so my only choice is to set up port forwarding rules manually on the router itself. Synology provides a list of network ports for the various services that you can run on a Synology NAS from this link here, which I'll also link in the description below. For this video, I want to enable DSM access, so I need to forward ports 5000 and 5001 from my router to the internal IP address of my Synology NAS. I won't go through the steps that I took to do that on my router, 
but here is a screenshot of my port forwarding rules to get this setup working. Basically, I want any TCP IP connections that come in from the WAN interface on ports 5000 and 5001 to be forwarded to the internal IP address assigned to my Synology NAS on the corresponding ports on the LAN interface. The last thing I'd like to do is make sure to always use a secured SSL connection when connecting to my Synology NAS over the internet. To do that, I'll go to Control Panel, Login Portal, and check the box to automatically redirect HTTP connections to HTTPS for DSM Desktop and save the changes. Now with everything set up, let me connect to my iPhone, which I've enabled as a personal hotspot, and I'll use it to test if external access is working to my Synology NAS. I'll enter in the DDNS address that was created earlier, along with port number 5000 using HTTP to confirm that the automatic redirect to HTTPS is working, which it looks like it is. I can confirm that the SSL certificate is valid as well. At this point, I'm at the login screen and I'm able to log in properly, confirming to me that the DDNS setup using port forwarding was set up successfully. Hopefully this video helps you set up DDNS and port forwarding for your Synology NAS in your specific setup. And if it did, let me know by leaving a comment down below. Lastly, if you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and consider subscribing to this channel as well. Thanks so much for watching.